I'm going to share with you the top secret of the pros of film scoring. In this episode, we're just going to quantize everything, and I mean everything. To f In this episode, we're going to look at how we get musicality back into our projects despite quantizing absolutely everything. We're going to talk about what attack is, why things get out of sync, and how we fix everything with track delays. We're going to need to debunk something here. The idea that over-quantizing kills musicality, or that it somehow reduces musicality. Well, hang on a minute. Let's start with the basics. What does quantization even mean? Then, we'll open up the piano roll and we'll see that the individual notes will not be exactly on the beat or on the grid. But if we select all, and then use this Q button here, or use the Q shortcut for quantize, then we can snap them to the grid, like this. So this is before quantize and after. Quantization moves our notes and our chords so that they snap onto a grid. The grid is flexible. It can be whatever tempo or time signature that we like, and we can change the tempo but the divisions of each bar are what each note is snapped to. Here you can select the different quantize values for quarter note, eighth note, and so on. And depending on the different value you select, the notes will move in a different way. Obviously, these aren't in the right place yet. Keep in mind to select the proper timing value when you quantize, so that the notes are moved to the beat that you want them at. After you've hit quantize, you might have thought that you wandered into the realm of extreme musical precision, where things are unnatural and unmusical. And you might be wondering, how do we get out of that? We might think that the act of quantizing things has made things too mechanical, and the first instinct is to humanize the music again. Every DAW has a plugin or a function to do this kind of humanization thing. In Logic, you find it in functions, MIDI transform, and humanize. And you might be tempted to use this to try and get your notes off the grid a bit. You might be, but I really, really, really need you to stop there. What the humanize function does is randomize things. Now, randomization is not a human process, or even a natural one. Certainly not the way it works within a sequencer. What it does is introduce a random algorithm to move a note ahead or behind the grid. So over here is where we pick the amount of time that we want things to move by in MIDI ticks. So if we pick, say, 25 ticks, and we select all, and then hit select and operate, we'll see the notes moving off the grid by 25 ticks every time. So like this. The issue is, we don't play music like that. We don't play some beats slightly quieter for no reason, or move some notes ahead of the beat and others behind, all by different amounts, unless we're basically playing badly. So it sounds funny, but humanizing isn't really human. And you'll find that if you do this, it doesn't magically fix your MIDI to make it sound good. So how do you fix your MIDI to get it to sound good again? Quantize it to... Let's figure out why something doesn't sound in time when we've aimed to quantize it to be in time. Let's look at some short notes, some staccato strings, for example. I've played in a part on the staccato strings that's meant to be all eighth notes, but I've played them in and I'm not dead in time and I'm not dead on the grid. But if I want them dead in time and on the grid, I just select all, eighth note quantize, and now they sound like this. We might think that we've just taken out musicality, but the samples have musicality in them already. There's a section of players here, and they've all tried to play on the same beat, but they're human, and so they haven't done so perfectly, and that's why they sound like a section, because of all the little variances. And so in the recorded samples, not all of the players of a section actually are starting at the same time. And so there's already enough randomness in sample libraries, so even when they're quantized, you can trust that you don't need to add any more. Let's select everything, all the notes on all the different tracks, and quantize everything to f So, it all sounds great now, right? Let's dive deeper in to diagnose this. So each track in solo sounds fine. But let's play all of the tracks together. Well, it's not bad. But you can hear that not everything is really together. It's all a bit out of sync. Some stuff is a bit earlier than others, even though we've quantized everything. Now, here's the deal. With any note, the real key information is in the first moments of the sound. When a string section plays different articulations, you know immediately which is which because of the first milliseconds of the notes. Here's an example. 
Spiccato strings versus slow sustains. When string players play spiccato, the bow forcefully bounces on the string and the sound of that articulation is there immediately. It's very different when the section plays slow sustains. The bow slowly excites the string. It takes a while until the note is fully audible, and it sort of slowly builds up until the note is there. This is what we mean when we talk about attack. Some articulations, like our forte spiccato, have a very fast attack. The sound is immediately there. Other patches, like the slow sustains, have a very slow attack. The attack is the time between the moment when the sound starts and the moment where the sound of the note is fully there. Different articulations will have different types of attacks and different section sizes could attack the same type of articulation differently. A larger section could never attack a note completely in sync with one another. They blur a little bit and they end up a bit slower, compared to a small section who have more audible definition. And we can hear all of this in the first 10 or 20 milliseconds of a note. It's quite amazing. Individually, the attack of all of our patches differ by tiny amounts, but when this is happening with every section or every patch, the result is that everything is a bit out with each other. But there are two ways that we can fix this. You can move other parts forward or backwards until they sound in time. So in this case, I might ever so slightly move my string section staccato midi ahead of the beat. and the result is a tighter, more in-time staccato sound. We can also do something like this for a legato line that we've got in here too. Every legato patch is a bit delayed in order to play the transitions between the notes. Now, you've probably played something in on a legato patch before, and you've compensated for the delay within the sampler. So, I need to pull my notes back a bit further than my staccato part for this legato patch. If I pull everything back about this much, let's see how this sounds. Let's do this another way. There's also an even better way than just pulling the notes back. Every DAW has a feature called track delay. You know the word delay from every time you've used a train or been stuck at an airport. Delay means that something is not on time, that it's arriving too late. Now in a DAW, a track delay is a technical process which makes notes arrive later. So let's undo all of this dragging of notes and get everything back quantized onto the grid. Now, instead of pulling them back to get them in time, I can put a track delay on each track. These track delays can make notes sound later than their positions on the grid, and I can configure how much later these notes are going to sound. If we go over to the inspector on the left-hand side of Logic here, you can see in the track area I've got this delay option, and I can set a delay in either milliseconds, in absolute time, or in ticks, like our MIDI data. If I stick in a value like 500 milliseconds, you'll see that when I open up this region and press play, the playhead will move over the note, but the note will sound later. However, the track delay in our DAW can work in the opposite direction as well. We can also program it so that notes are not played late, but early. This is called a negative track delay. Right, using the same staccato and legato parts. I want some of my staccato notes to be a little bit earlier. I'm using this uh, spiccato track as a basis, and I think this is a much slower staccato sound, so I'm going to try minus 40 milliseconds for that. This one just needs to come back a little bit, maybe minus 10. And then this celli staccato is a much bigger section, so let's try minus 100. Let's see what this sounds like. I can already hear this celli section is a little bit early. Let's try minus 70. Nitpicky, but maybe another 10 milliseconds there. Great, 
I think that sounds much better. So legato next, and we know that legato takes a much longer time because it has to select the right transition. So let's go with minus 200 and see what this sounds like. Not bad, but maybe just a little less than 200. Now we've worked on how to deal with our MIDI and make everything neat and tidy and quantized to working with track delays and everything is sounding in time and together. But why is this important? If it sounds okay, then why do we need negative track delays or quantizing or any of this stuff? Well, obviously it keeps your project clear and well laid out, but it's more than that. This is how the pros operate. This is the big secret. Imagine that your music or parts of it will be played and recorded by a real orchestra then you'll have to make some sheet music out of your project or give your project to someone who does this professionally, like an orchestrator or a copyist. Now, when someone opens up your project, either to start converting it into their notation software or maybe just opening up your MIDI file from scratch, you want them to get a good sense of the music straight away. And if you've quantized everything carefully, then you stand a good chance of this happening straight away. If you want to be a pro, you've got to work like one. And this includes not making other people fix your mess. Now, to some extent, a bit of this is inevitable, but if you're on the grid before this happens, then everyone is going to understand the musical intentions and the decisions that you've made. So, clean up your project and quantize everything to 